everyone and welcome to my first episode of Cooking with Katie on Fridays. As you guys know, today is not Friday, it's Sunday, but I had to change it up a little this week since this is the first week and I made the announcement on Friday. Um, but for those of you who are new to my channel, I'm going to be doing an ongoing um, Cooking with Katie episode every Friday and I'm just going to have a new different recipe for you guys each week. Typically you'll see me using mostly all Trader Joe's products to make my food. However, I'm not going to exclude these episodes with just Trader Joe's. So if there are things that I like or use from other places, I will use those ingredients as well. But of course I'll tell you guys everything that I'm using just like I always have and we'll go through what I'm making. So today I am going to be doing a guacamole from scratch and this isn't necessarily like a food recipe but I love to make guacamole and I think I've perfected it because I've been making it for so long now um, that it's just it's like one of those things that when it's getting warmer, it's becoming summer, it's so nice to have fresh homemade guacamole and especially the one that I make, I really love. I also thought guacamole would be perfect because Cinco de Mayo is coming up and you have to have some like delicious guac. So guys, let's go ahead and get started. I'm gonna show you guys all the ingredients that I'm gonna be using and then show you what I do. All right, so we are going to use some yellow onion, jalapenos, some garlic, salt and pepper, a tomato, a lime, and a bag of the four count avocados that we sell at Trader Joe's. The first step is to cut open the avocados and ha I cross hatch them so it's easy to scoop out and then they mush up really easily. And I'm using super soft avocados that have been I think sitting on my counter for a few days now, so they're like the perfect consistency. I like to leave it a little chunky in my guacamole because it just gives it a little bit more texture, so I don't want it to be super smooth. However, like I said, my avocados are so soft that it might not be avoidable to have it super creamy, but either way, it will still be delicious. So I can't start making guacamole without a Mexican style beer, Pacifico, so I'm going to have a beer while I'm making this. You guys can join me too. Please grab something. Water, I don't care. Tea, <laughs> whatever you want. Coffee, definitely coffee. Um, all right, so I'm going to start by cutting my avocado in half. These are nice and pretty green ones. I take out the seed. Alright guys, so you saw I just cut the avocado in half, took the seed out, cross-hatched the cutting of it, and scooped it into here. I'm going to go ahead and finish the rest of them, so I'm going to do four total, and once I'm finished, I will show you guys what it looks like, and we'll get going with the rest of the ingredients. I finished getting all the avocados in the bowl, as you can see, and I am going to actually mix it up with a spoon. Normally, if the avocados are a little more firm, I will use a fork to kind of break it up, but these are so soft, and like I said, I wanted them to have a little bit of like chunkiness to the avocado still that I'm just gonna use a spoon and stir it up once I get like most of the ingredients in there. So I'm gonna start off by cutting a lime, and I'm gonna use probably almost the entire lime. I do lime first because I want to make sure that the, the guacamole stays nice and green and the lime prevents it from getting brown really fast. So that's why I kinda just do the lime and I'll mix it all up and then I'll start with everything else and then I'll mix it all at the end too. But that's the reason I do that and I always roll my lime to get the juices kind of like ready. I squeezed an entire half of lime into the guacamole first and then I kind of did like a half squeeze on the second half because I don't want it to be too limey and overpowering with lime but 
I will do a taste test at the end, and sometimes I feel like I need to add a little more. So I still have enough juice in the second half that I can squeeze the rest in at the end and kind of like make it to my specifications. But for now, I'm going to start with the garlic. I am doing three cloves of garlic. I'm going to finely chop them or mince them, whatever, you, however you want to say it. And those are going to go straight into the guacamole as is raw, which is super good for you too because raw garlic is very heart healthy. So I put the three cloves of garlic, as you can see, finely chopped. I try to chop it as fine as I can just so that each bite has a little bit of the garlic flavor. And it really does make the biggest difference putting garlic in there. If you guys are huge garlic lovers, feel free to add more cloves than just three. And then the next thing I'm going to do is chop some yellow onion. And I also dice this fairly small just so that way, you know, you're not getting big chunks of onion in a bite of your guacamole. All right, guys, I just chopped the onion, so it's about a, a little over half a cup. I don't want to say it's three quarters of a cup because it's not. So I kind of just eyeball these ingredients because, like I said, I've been making this for a long time. I love fresh onion in my guacamole, so I do kind of a lot, but I like that little crunch that you get in every bite. So um, if you guys don't like a ton of onion, you can always do less because sometimes they say less is more. <laughs> Cutting into the tomato now, I'm just using a vine ripened tomato. Again, guys, I take all the insides out of my tomato just so that it's not super watery. Change of plans, guys. That tomato had been sitting out a few days too long, a couple days too long. So I am foregoing the tomato in this recipe, which makes me so sad because I love tomato and I'm really bummed out because it's just not going to be the same. It makes such a big difference to just have, first of all, the pop of color in there with the red and the green. It's, it's really pretty visually, but the flavor itself is just so much better and I'm, I kind of am really sad that we don't have tomato now. Sometimes when I don't have tomato, I will add salsa and I usually have pico de gallo on hand, but I don't have that either. So I might just use like the jar of salsa I have in my fridge just to give it a little bit of a tomato flavor. But I'm going to go ahead and add the jalapeno. I don't think jalapenos are very spicy. So I usually can put a whole one in there and still kind of like add more to it if I want to. But jalapeno has really good flavor and it just, you know, it just makes it taste really good. Before I cut this, I did want to mention that there are oils on these peppers that can get into your skin and then burn your eyes, burn your mouth, burn your nose. Be careful when you, you know, are petting your pets. So I am going to go ahead and clean out the middles because the seeds are the hottest part of the pepper. So I'm just going to take those seeds out. And if you guys want to add the seeds, you can, but beware, it's probably going to be really spicy if you do that. So I diced the jalapeno pretty small because I don't want to get a really big chunk in my mouth and burn my tongue. So I'm just taking the jalapeno and putting it in there. If you guys have made guacamole in the past, tell me what peppers that you like in your guacamole. I'm very curious to know. And then the last step is just going to be adding salt and pepper to taste. So initially I just do like a good sprinkling of salt all over and it's a lot of avocado so salt makes a huge difference in flavor enhancing everything. So I'm mixing all the ingredients, combining them all together into the guac and it already just looks so good but it's missing tomato. I did also want to mention to you guys that sometimes I add cilantro um, if I have it on hand. I don't necessarily always buy cilantro because a lot of times I only use a little bit for my guacamole and then it goes bad. So in this case, I didn't use some, but it is so good and cilantro just really gives it like a fresh flavor unless you think it tastes like soap because some people don't like cilantro because it has like a soapy taste to them, but I love it. If you are doing the tomato, I usually dice them 
I like to have a little bit of like chunkiness in my tomato, like to my tomatoes. I don't dice them too small because then it'll make your guacamole like extremely watery. All right, guys, I'm going to just do a quick taste test to see if I need to add any salt and pepper and lime to this. Oh, that's good. Oh, yeah, that's really good. I'm going to just do a little bit more salt, just a tiny bit. It really doesn't need much more. So that, I'm just going to add a little bit more lime. It doesn't taste like lime at all, but it has the perfect flavor. So I'm just going to finish off that lime. Mix it back up. <clears throat> I'm going to taste test this now with chips. And I'm using these late July organic sea salt thin and crispy chips. These tortilla chips are delicious. I really like the thin crispiness of these chips. So, um... They sell them at Costco in like a humongous bag, but I think I got these at Sprout. Super good. Probably shouldn't have added all that lime in the end because it's very limey now, but I actually really like lime too. I just maybe would have just done a little bit less. I put a little of this chunky salsa from Trader Joe's in there. You can see what it looks like with tomato. I just could not stand not having any tomato in my guacamole. I know, I'm a freak, but I love tomatoes. So anyways, if you guys like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel if you have not already. And I will see you guys in my next video. Remember, Fridays are cooking with Katie, and the rest of the week is a toss-up. You never know what you're going to get. So I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.